Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome back for another video. I've got a lot of content to cover today. Many different things to talk about. I'm going to take a look at what drove the price down so much yesterday. Uh, two major things. You're probably, if, if you've read the news, you've probably seen one specific thing. There's a second thing that I want to talk about. I want to take a look at funding. I want to take a look at exchange balances. And I want to take a look at some positive things. Believe it or not, there's some positive things to look at as well. So if you like this content, uh, feel free to smash up that like button, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment in the comment section. But otherwise, let's go ahead and dive right in. So the big thing that happened yesterday, this was the bigger of the two things, is that the December meeting minutes were released. And um, right after they were released, we saw the stock market, the crypto market tank. And so for Bitcoin, we were holding this key level of $45,500 or so. And when that news came out, we flushed. And what happened? A few longs got liquidated. It wasn't heavy liquidations, which is actually kind of a good sign that there, there wasn't that, what that communicates is that, you know, retail dumb money isn't, is more heavy short than they are long. So the longs got liquidated and we saw a little bit of liquidations. I'll, I'll point out the, that in a chart. But um, let, let's just talk. Let's take a look at what this. What the Fed. Um, what the Fed revealed. So Fed's December meeting minutes found a common economy quote, much stronger with higher inflation. So we know the inflation, higher inflation, but the Fed has found that the economy is much stronger than they realized. And you know, I mean, if you've seen my skepticism on this channel before, I just believe that this is a house of cards. And as soon as they start unwinding this massive amount of assets, you know, unloading the assets, whatever you want to use, whatever word you want to use to describe it, um, they're going to see that this is a house of cards. And so, and then the, the inflation. So you guys saw the CPI numbers from November, from December, they were exceptionally high. I think it was what, 6.8%. And so they, they want to combat, com combat that. This is the big thing from the White House. This is the stain in Joe Biden's opinion on his legacy or, you know, Joe Biden's people's opinions on Joe Biden's legacy. They want to combat this. They want to fight it hard. And so what they want to do is they want to get, get more aggressive with tapering and with rate hikes. And so, you know, it seems more likely now that a lot of these things that were going to happen over a span of several quarters is going to happen like in the first quarter. So we'll see. But that kind of news, of course, is going to have a negative reaction on the market. But here's the second big thing that happened. I don't know how many of you caught this, but Kazakhstan. I'm going to talk about Kazakhstan for a second. So Kazakhstan leaders shut down internet amid gas price protest protests. Internet activity in the country ground to a halt this week as protests erupted over a rise in gas prices. So what, do, what does Kazakhstan have to do with any of this? If you remember this summer, I'm sure you do, you know, you, especially if you've been in Bitcoin and, you know, in crypto since uh, early 2021 or even mid 2021, uh, what's the big thing, the big story from over the summer is that China banned Bitcoin mining. And where did Chinese miners go? For the most part, they went to one of two locations. The first location was the United States. They went to the United States, took several months to get all of their equipment over to the United States, get hooked up, you know, get the structure, the infrastructure set up. The second biggest place they went to was Kazakhstan. And so Kazakhstan, as reported by my friend Joshua Jake, has 18% of the mining power of Bitcoin. And so the internet was shut off in the country and the hash rate dipped. And so what happens when hash rate, dr rate drops is that that communicates to algorithms that there is less strength in Bitcoin system and these algorithms, these short term, the traders, they all sell immediately. There's no way that if you read this news and were able to put the pieces together, that you would be able to, to respond faster than the algorithm, than, than the, the bots. And so hash rate dropped um, very sharply, very quickly, the price dumped along with, you know, the Fed minutes, these, these two big things, this is what contributed yesterday. There is a precedent for this. So in May, no, sorry, in April, when Bitcoin, you know, Coinbase day, Bitcoin topped out at $64,900 by that weekend, it got to $60,000. And then there was a flash crash, um, that dropped the price of Bitcoin down to $51,000. It, it 
bounced up really quickly. It didn't get back to $60,000, but what was that flash crash? Well, there was a mudslide in China. There was a mudslide in one particular city in China that had a great deal of Bitcoin's hash rate. The hash rate dropped, you know, hash, you know, uh, mining capabilities. The hash rate dropped and that caused a severe drop in price. There were liquidations and all that stuff too. But the hash rate, that significant amount of a hash rate drop, um, lack of words, words, give me a second here. Uh, that kind of a hash rate drop caused a sell-off. It was a quick sell-off. It bounced right back. For this one though, which is makes me think that, yeah, we can go much lower. There wasn't much of a bounce back. You know, we got as low as what, 42.3, 42.5, something like that. But this, this contributed to it for sure. Uh, hash rate immediately dropped. So, all right, Fed Minutes, Kazakhstan, those were the two big things from yesterday. Um, I was in bed. Oh, yeah, you can see, here we go. Network connectivity, Kazakhstan, 20, 2022, January 2nd to January 5th. So January 5th, boom, just completely dropped. Um, I was in bed last night because what's the big thing that I'm thinking of is as I'm thinking more so through the Fed stuff versus the Kazakhstan stuff, but I'm thinking like, okay, what is, is this going to inject the same kind of fear into the system as it did in May. I just, I had a feeling, I had a fear. I don't know what you wanna call it. There was something in my mind that was thinking, is this the kind of FUD that's going to cause long-term holders to sell their Bitcoin or you know, to, to take their illiquid supply and turn it liquid? I mean, here's the last, this, this, is, this does not include yesterday, this chart, but it's amazing looking at Bitcoin's illiquid supply. It just keeps on rising. And so I waited up until midnight and here's the thing that I look for. I, 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 every day, Glassnode alerts. They give their daily on-chain exchange flow. And I was, expect, I was fully expecting something like half a billion dollars more transferred onto exchanges than off of exchanges. And instead, it was, it was as if nothing happened. Uh, so this is a good sign, for Bitcoin at least. But Ethereum, now that's not a significant amount, $47.2 million more of Ethereum transferred to exchanges than off of exchanges. And you know, we're, we're, let's see what happens over the, the next uh, 24, 48 hours with Bitcoin. But Ethereum, I'm, I've seen this trend happen. I've pointed out on my Twitter account and you know, it's not a good sign for short term that I'm, we, we're still seeing Ethereum transfers onto exchanges. Um, I've shared this before. I, I shared it on my Twitter account a few days ago. I shared it again. And so this is what I was afraid of. This is the big thing that I was afraid of with that Fed news is that we were going to start seeing a lot of Bitcoin transfer, transfer to exchanges. And instead, we've barely seen, we haven't seen much. You know, and over the last few months, you know, we, uh, when Bitcoin got to its all-time high, we saw some net position change, that, which is logically going to happen. Uh, but you know, last over the last month or so, we haven't really seen much. This is a good sign for a net position change. Um, that even end of the year, that there wasn't a lot of uh, tax loss harvesting or tax sales. It was just ho hum. Um, it is what it is. Let's keep it going. You know. So here's Bitcoin, but then here's Ethereum, and I was tracking this every day. And I was like, what is going on? We didn't even really see that much of a change for Ethereum in May when Bitcoin, you know, all of this stuff was going on for Bitcoin, we didn't see that much happen. We saw a little bit happen in May, but we didn't see a ton. Uh, but over the last few weeks, we have seen more Ethereum transferred to exchanges than any point in the last year. And that did stop at the end of December. So I did think it was kind of an end of the year thing, but here's my thought. I haven't seen anyone else say this. You know, what drives the market? It's not just Bitcoin. Ethereum can drive the market. Believe it or not, XRP can drive the market. Litecoin. There was this rumor a few months ago that Litecoin was partnering with Walmart, that Walmart was going to start accepting Litecoin. And Litecoin shot up to like $221, was $180, shot up to $221. And then that rumor ended up being false. And then it went right back down $180. And everything else rose along with Litecoin. There are other things that can drive, other big things that can drive this market. And so can Ethereum drive the market? Absolutely it can. And what I'm submitting to you is actually this is this sell-off 
has more to do with Ethereum than it does with Bitcoin. Because Bitcoin, the, and honestly, it's, it's one of these things that I'm thinking is that Bitcoin holders have a lot more conviction than Ethereum holders. And so what does that mean? That, that doesn't mean necessarily that that's going to continue. Like I said, that did taper off at the end of the year, except for yesterday. You know, this is the first day, I think, of 2022 that I am seeing a net flow, a net positive flow to exchanges. But I do think that Ethereum is contributing more so to this dump than Bitcoin, along with the news of the Federal Reserve in Kazakhstan. So what else do we have? But yeah, here in context, in context, all right, this might just be a blip. It might just be a blip. Here is the percent balance on exchanges. This is this is the last few weeks. Let me zoom in on that. That is what we see over the last few weeks. The, the trend is still that Ethereum balance on exchanges is decreasing rapidly, but um, the last few weeks has me a little bit concerned. A little bit, not a ton, just a little bit, but um, that could immediately uh, move in, in, the, in the right direction. It could, for sure. So, Liquidations. Now, this is there were some liquidations yesterday. There was three hundred million dollars worth of liquidations yesterday. Put it in context, though. Now, here is that May mudslide that, that I was talking about, the hash rate drop, huge level of liquidations, and then by far the biggest of the year was that you know the 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 combination of Elon Musk saying that Tesla wasn't accepting Bitcoin and China saying that they were banning certain things. I think that was around the time that they banned mining that specific day. Major, major liquidations got whipped down at like $29,000. And here's yesterday in context, it's a little blip. Here's December 4th, December 4th felt pretty miserable. In context, that's not nearly as significant as these kind of liquidations that happened here. And so here, let me share with you the hypothesis that's going on right now, is that there is more um, emphasis being placed, more bids, more retail in short positions than they are in long positions. Because if there was more retail in long positions, that would have been much more of a cascade. Maybe it would have been on the same level of December 4th. But it wasn't. It was just a. It was. It was a blip. I mean, it was a drop of two thousand dollars. We've seen much worse. You know, two thousand dollars. That's sometimes what I call Tuesday. So, what does that mean for the future? I am still. I am neutral. Should I be bearish? No. I mean, yeah. I, could we see thirty? The thirty thousands. I, I don't think we're going to see thirty. I don't think we're going to see the low thirties. Could we see the upper thirties? I mean, we're at forty-two something right now. We could certainly see the upper thirties. Um, but in general, I am, I am more neutral. And if you, again, if you're going to put a gun to my head, I'm going to say that I'm, I'm more bullish from here than I am, than I am bearish. And why? Because fear and greed, that is not what I want. Let me, let me, uh, move here. Historic Bitcoin, historic fear and greed index. I have never seen this before on look into Bitcoin.com. I think this is a new thing that they have pointed out. This is a great visualization of of just when's the time you know when is the time to buy now we are equivalent so score of 15 fear score of 15 the the um coronavirus dump was the most fear induced time score of nine let's see december of 2018 score of 11 so yeah the score could go lower but historically fear greed index wise this is a time to buy. I, and I, I, I hate saying that, you know, because I feel like a broken record. Because honestly, yes, was the 40,000s, upper 40,000s, looking at these kinds of things, was that a time to buy? I mean, yes, it was. And so, and, and I'm saying again that, yeah, I could, I could see Bitcoin going to the upper 30s, wicking to the upper 30s. I don't, I don't know about closing, you know, daily close or weekly close in the upper 30s. But, Historically, this just looks like a time to buy. Um, so if you've been watching my channel, if you've been, I haven't said that, I've said this on my lives, I haven't said it on my YouTube, or, uh, sorry, on my TikTok videos, but I know I've said this on my TikTok video, or my YouTube videos, um, that I was trying to discipline myself to not be a buyer between forty-five and fifty-two thousand dollars, that that was my dollar amount. We got under forty-six thousand dollars several times. I think it was like ten times or something like that. 
And I was not a buyer. I, I was just, that was, I, if I was trying, if I was perfectly disciplined, I'm not perfectly disciplined, but if I was perfectly disciplined, I would have stuck to that and said, all right, under $45,000, I'm a buyer. And so my general dis disposition right now, yes, things could get worse, but my general disposition right now is to be a buyer. Um, but Alex, you're all in, right? I'm all in. Well, you know, I did do some tax loss harvesting at the end of the year to make my 2021 taxes a little bit less painful. And so I do have some fiat, some stable coins sitting on the sidelines. And if I wasn't scared, you know, just if I wasn't, cause I'm, let me be honest with you guys. Yeah, I'm scared. Uh, fear is high, you know, uh, we could go lower. But if I was emotionless right now, I would be a buyer. I would be a buyer. And even I'm thinking about this from the perspective of my kids. Um, I buy a little bit of Bitcoin for my kids every month and in some Ethereum as well. Um, and thinking about them, I am completely unemotional with their wallet, which is in my name, but you know, their wallet and my mentality right now is, all right, I bought some crypto at the end of December and I'm trying to buy a little bit every month. I might just, I, I, just, I just feel like, you know what, maybe I should just buy now and that'll be my buy for this month because maybe this is the op an opportunity for, for them to stack sats and to stack some Ethereum. And th for me, that is a completely unemotional decision. So maybe that <laughs> I should be thinking about my kids more because you know they're not selling any of that until they turn 18 at least and I, I hope that they would have the conviction to hold it longer than that and my oldest child is 10. so anyway um that is my just general mentality right now one bit of positive news is that that asian selling cascade that we saw at the end of the year and again I am convinced that Bitcoin would have gone to six figures if it wasn't for this. Uh, what caused this Huobi, OKEX, Binance shutting down their mainland China operations. Um, but good news. Look at that. You see that little green line there, that little green bar. All right. That, that very much feeds into my thesis that this was... End of the year, Huobi, Binance, and OKEx shutting down their Chinese main, mainland operations. And so what kind of results will this produce? I mean, I just think this has to be a factor that this is bullish, that we don't have to worry about this cascade of selling in China. So anyway, um, it's not all doom and gloom. It is, yes, difficult right now. But I hope that you have a large majority of your portfolio in things that you have a certain level of conviction about. Like I have no fears buying Bitcoin right now. I have some fears buying pretty much anything else, but for sure not Bitcoin because that is where my conviction lies and Ethereum, but I'm a little bit afraid of Ethereum right now. So conviction, where is your conviction? Lean into that. This is not financial advice. Do your own research. And last thing I'll say, save the best for last. Holding crypto and buying crypto, it's like 90% misery, 10% euphoria, but 90% misery. And then one day you wake up in the future and you find that you are filthy rich. But man, what a ride. You will have earned every dollar, <laughs> you know, that day in the future when you wake up. So I know this was a long video, but I hope you have a wonderful day, a wonderful weekend. And um, I hope that you are not stressed too much, but that you have a, you know, just live your life, man. Live life, enjoy life, and don't let this make you, make you miserable. Um, there will be brighter days. When? Well, we'll see. But have a great week. Peace.